Hello and welcome to Steve Knows. Today is the release of Racket NX for the Oculus Quest, so let's review it. I would also like to thank my friend Gamer Reality for this Oculus t-shirt for my birthday. It's amazing. I'm not an Oculus employee. If you've got the time spare and want to see some great VR content, please check him out. Link in description and up here. So Racket NX coming from one Hamza is a pretty unique game and one that if you didn't play it in VR, just wouldn't be the same. This game was available on Steam a year ago actually on the 17th of July and it received a rather modest 97% on Steam. It's now out on the Oculus Quest, so how does it feel being on this little portable device? Oh, isn't it cute? There isn't a story to follow with this game, which is honestly not an issue for me for this style of play. Can you imagine Beat Saber with a story? Star Wars with dubstep. Use the oscillator, Luke. It's a futuristic game of racquetball, which is similar to the game Squash, but instead of hitting against a flat wall, you are placed in a dome that surrounds you in 360. This is an awesome touch that only the quest can really make full use of, being completely untethered. So turning around and around and around isn't going to be a problem, and it provides that immersive freedom. The aim of the game is that in this dome you have areas that light up with very vibrant colours that you are trying to hit with your ball. In doing so depletes the light on the wall and you have to keep doing this until the light is completely gone. Similar to Ball Breaker, if anyone remembers that epic title. Surrounding those areas can be health drops shown with a blue medical symbol and damaging cells with a red skull on them. Those you want to avoid because you have an energy bar which reduces every time you hit the ball. So if you're playing for too long, you'll need to replenish this energy. Or if you hit too many red cells, you'll need to as well. Otherwise, the game will end. And it's a lot easier said than done. There are three game modes available. An infinite game where you can play forever if you just want to brush up on your skills or simply just not exist in the real world. I get it. I do. There's also a staged mode where you are given novice to expert experience levels. Inside them you can achieve up to 3 stars per level, which at least enables you to go back and try and nail them once you've completed the game. And these levels get really interesting as you progress. Each level has a number of waves to complete, and they also increase with difficulty as you get closer to the end, but if you fail just one, you have to start from the beginning. Level 1 starts off simple, no obstacles, just a wall. But then you start getting cells that are on different levels to each other, poking out of the wall. Ones have edges that ping the ball off like pinball. There's one that stops the ball so it will break your combo. You get portals, where if you hit the ball through it, it will come out through a wormhole somewhere else in a different location. You have cells that speed up the ball's pace. So many additions to make the game more interesting as you play on and on, and also gets more rewarding as it gets more more difficult because you have to be better. This game actually feels incredible. It feels amazing. I've moaned a lot about the rumble being weak on the quest and it ruins some immersion for me, but in this case it's actually perfect because it's racquetball in space. So hitting this ball I would expect a relatively light ball in a vacuum. Feeling realistic. It's such a great satisfying feeling when you wallop the ball and you just see it take off with such velocity. You also have the ability to call the ball back with some sort of force. So if you knock it into some red cells, you can call it back. Or if you want to chain moves quickly or change direction in the dome, you can drag it around as well. It's such an amazing touch. I, <laughs> It feels really good. This game runs so well on the quest, it's really smooth, responsive, vibrant, immersive. Hats off to one Hamza who ported this title. They did an amazing job. But since it's not the most demanding game in the world, they obviously had some advantages in porting it over in the areas I just mentioned. I did unfortunately experience tracking loss issues where the screen would go black and then I'd pop back into the game. This seems to be a reoccurring thing with the latest Quest releases, so I'm starting to wonder if it is the developers or is it the Quest headset? But something that's looking really good is your racket. I brought it up to my face and looked at its movement. The detail, it was stunning. The light reflecting off it was on a level I've never seen on the Quest so far on this limited chipset. It's always better to do something simple well than something grand half assed it is making use of foveated rendering though, which you can see on the warning text at the start of the game, but once you start playing, you don't see it at all. The music in this title is something I enjoyed so much. It wasn't a boring backing track, they were really upbeat, 
blood pumping music that makes you want to get in the groove and just rack it for hours. And a nice little feature which I think a lot of people should take note on is that you can play your own music in this game. I remember the 360 days when they enabled this feature. I would play my own music on everything. But on Racquetball, you can. They should have called this game Racquetball Rave Enect. It would have been a more fitting title because the music is great. So the colours of the game, the fast paced nature, the music, the gameplay, it all makes for such great fun. And the icing on top of this cake is the multiplayer. VR multiplayer is in such demand and this game has it and it's pretty awesome. I had the honour of getting to play with some of the developers in a match of best of three. It's you versus the opponent and you take it in turns hitting the ball against the wall. Trying to dampen the illuminated areas and the energy cells still avoiding the red ones. So for example when red hits the ball against the wall when it comes back it will go blue meaning it's now the opponent's turn. And you keep taking it in turns like this, trying to score the most points. You're trying to maximise the points earned with each swing. So you start off with 500 each and the winner is whoever gets to 1,000 first or whoever has the most points at the end of the session. The catch is the point system acts like a tug of war. When you earn points, the opponents are reduced. When they earn points, yours is reduced. So you have to be consistently good in order to win. Throughout the game are also power-ups floating around and if you hit them they could give you the advantage in games such as a cluster ball or a bigger ball that earns you more points when you hit the right cells. The multiplayer is a great touch especially because you and your opponent you're next to each other whilst playing so you can look at each other, taunt and dance whilst playing. Something I would have liked to have seen in this game though is some different game modes. It's becoming too often in these VR titles that we get the standard game but no fun quirky spin-offs. These quirky things make such a difference like if we had some training where we had to hit flies with the racket to practice our reactions or some futuristic kung fu training, something not related to the actual game's premise but using the same mechanics. A great example of this is Rocket League. Instead of just shooting the ball into a goal they had basketball. It kept the same mechanics but a different style of play. Also, some customization on your racket would have been a nice touch. Maybe some different colors or some different styled rackets. Maybe in an update, guys. But overall, I enjoyed this game. One Hamza have done a brilliant job with this port. It looks beautiful and feels beautiful. The game itself, there's a ton of fun to be had. It had such a mixture of things. It's hyper, it's dancey, it's racquetball, it's pinball, it's ball breaker, it's VR. This game is $20, so around £16, which to me initially I thought was a little steep, but the fact you get story levels, you get the multiplayer, and it's so well implemented, it doesn't feel like a rushed experience, I think it's actually pretty reasonable. I've got to give Racquetball a solid 8 out of 10. Thank you for watching Steve Knows, my Racket NX review. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Happy gaming, guys. Good day.